Coming up on today's episode, I've got three Pottery Barn inspired DIYs for you with a Christmas flair. So let's get started. Welcome to Design to the Nines. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Natalie Callahan, and I'm so glad you could join me today. On today's episode, we are gonna be knocking off three Pottery Barn items. We're gonna be doing it for a tiny fraction of the cost. And our first one is we are gonna be doing some mini street lamps. Now, last year I made this street lamp and it was a really big hit. People really enjoyed that. And I thought it would be really fun to do a smaller version of that that I could use on my dining table or on my mantle, wherever I decide to end up putting these. And I came across this on the Pottery Barn website and for a set of two, it was a hundred dollars for these little Christmas inspired mini street lamps and I think that we can do it for a whole lot less. Now if you've watched my channel you have seen me use these outdoor spindles before. I've made candlesticks out of them, I've made a wreath holder out of them, I've made several things out of them and then we're going to just add this to the list. Now this is like a smaller version of the big spindle that I used for my big street lamp last year and so this is all going to coordinate really well together. So you're going to need two of these if you're going to make a set of two and at my lows they cost two dollars and 18 cents each now you can kind of pick through these because some of them can be kind of rough and i have found the ones that are the most smooth so that way i don't have to sand them down there's some that are a little bit more rough because these were meant to go outdoors and i'm going to take these and cut them down outside on my miter saw so meet me outside so I wanted to bring you out here and give you a little instruction on a miter saw. It's nothing to be afraid of, I promise you. This just makes work so much easier and the things that you can create when you're comfortable using one of these are awesome. So I just am such a huge advocate for using power tools. I want everybody to be powerful. <laughs> I'm going to cut this down and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just cut it down really close to this edge right here and we're going to leave a little bit of this so that the little lantern has something to sit on that's a little bit sturdy. We're going to line this up against this so it's nice and snug and it's not wiggling around. Okay, so are you with me so far? You want to wear your safety glasses. I know I'm going to get comments, yes, wear a face mask ear protection and all of that if that bothers you. I'm out in the open air, but I do recommend wearing ear protection and face masks, especially if you have any problems with your lungs or your ears, anything like that. We're gonna pull our blade down like so. Make sure we have it where we want it to cut off. And that's just kind of a dry run. We're not pulling anything. We're just kind of seeing where we like it. And that looks like a good spot. In order to start this, you pull this little yellow button here and that releases your trigger, which is here. So you pull this with your thumb and pull this with your hand. And that starts the saw. And then once you've got the saw going, you pull it down and it cuts. So just make sure that your hands are away and you're protected to whatever level you want. And we're gonna make this cut now. Okay, so you can see that we've got a little ledge for this to sit on. So then we're gonna mark to 16 inches down from our new cut. Here I marked it to 19 inches, but decided later it was just too long so ignore the extra few inches for the next part as i do get it how i like in the end and then once we cut this down we can use this for our second one to use as like a pattern so let's just go ahead and make this cut now if you don't have a miter saw don't feel bad you can get this job done with just a simple miter box and these are not very expensive maybe 10 to 12 dollars i believe and you can cut these down by hand okay so now we've got these the same height they're good to go and what we're going to do is we're going to just take a little sanding block and just kind of sand off any loose fibers from the cut and just so it has a smooth edge. You don't need much there. And then kind of do that on the top as well. Just 
want it to be as finished as possible. Okay, now we're gonna take our square base. You can get these at Hobby Lobby, four in a pack for $2.99, and then always buy them 50% off so you can get four in a pack for $1.50, which is a great deal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the bottom of our little lantern stand right in the center. And then we're gonna do the same in here and just mark center and we'll measure on the bottom here. So you've got X marks the spot. <laughs> and then we are gonna take our drill that has our drill bit on it and we are going to drill down. And then the same on your other on the bottom here. So it has a starting point. And you don't have to go in very far just enough so it has something to grip. Now, because we don't want this to wobble, we want to countersink the hole. And you can do that with a larger drill bit if you want, but I actually have a, a countersinker bit that looks like that. And we're gonna put that in our drill. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we're gonna countersink the hole. And that's just so the, the screw head doesn't make it wobble. See how easy that is? I know you can do this. We've got this. So make sure you put the regular Phillips head bit back on. And now we're gonna just take our screw, screw it in the bottom of our plaque and into the bottom of our lantern. And then we've got our foundation. There you go, nice and tight and sturdy and you can set that down and you can kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like right there. And it's looking good, what do you think? Before we spray paint this, we are gonna glue on our little hook for our mini wreath that was on our inspiration one so that it all gets a nice flat black coat of paint. So now that we've got that spray painted, it's time to add our little mini lantern. Now I have a couple of options for you. If you hurry to the Dollar Tree right now while they still maybe have some Halloween stuff, they have these little mini lamps. Now it originally comes with like a yellow plastic insert with like bats and things on it. As soon as I got home, I immediately kind of pulled it out and tossed it. I should have kept it so you could know what exactly it looks like. It's a dollar, it could work for you. I didn't like it because the little switch is on the bottom so that's kind of hard to turn on and off especially if you want to put it on the top of your little candlestick so I'm not going to use this but this would be a one dollar option but the one I ended up going with actually is pretty good this I got at Michael's and it's a six pack I couldn't find it in smaller amounts so you had I had to buy six of them six for twelve dollars or it makes them two dollars a piece if you are making six of them now I found this one off of Amazon that looks looks a little closer to the inspiration ones. That's a little bit more ornate and a little bit more frilly. Ours is gonna be a little bit different from the inspiration one, but what I like about it is this looks very close to the one that I made last year. So it's gonna look like more of a set. Where these are so light and because it would be hard to put a drill through this anyways, all we're gonna do is take my favorite combination, which is the E6000 and hot glue combo. I like the Gorilla hot glue because it's really, really st much stronger than other ones. And we're gonna glue that to the top. And then the very last thing we need to do is I have a little bit of this vine left over. I just used a little tiny of it last year for some little Christmas ornaments. And we are gonna create the little wreath that goes on it. We're gonna just cut it off and like wire it to itself together and then we can also toss in a couple of red berries you can just pluck them off another Christmas bush you can find them at the Dollar Tree and just hot glue those on or you can use white you can use whatever color combination works for yours and then we've got our little wreaths to hang on the front of them just like the ones from Pottery Barn all you need to do is put in a tea light and you are done 
In the end, you can get these done for about $5 each, making it $10 versus $100 for a set of two. Unfortunately, it is a little bit more because you have to buy a six pack, which would bump up the price to $18 if you were just making it for this pair only and not doing anything else with the other four lanterns, but still a huge savings off of the original. Plus, if you wanted to do the Dollar Tree Lantern, you could get it done for even less. I love that mine matches my larger version and I love these little lanterns. It really is a massive savings and a really adorable look for so much less. Today's episode is in collaboration with the Look For Less Challenge, which is always hosted by my good friend Yami from the Latina Next Door. And this month is co-hosted by Lisa Burningham, who is also a very dear friend. So I'm so excited to participate in this challenge with my very dear friends. So when you're done watching my episode, make sure you pop on over and check out Yami's and Lisa's episodes. I know you're gonna be very impressed. And then also make sure you check out the entire playlist. It's it's so much fun. So for our next Christmas Pottery Barn knockoff, we are going to be doing the Barn Door Star Art. The original is $199, and that's not including shipping if you need to ship it. So that's very expensive. Now I'm gonna be taking some liberties in size and such. I could go through my scrap pile and build something in the big size that it is. But what I'm gonna be doing today is I picked up this on the Hobby Lobby clearance section for $3. 99 and it's solid wood it's sturdy and it will be a really good foundation for what we're doing now it's a little bit smaller than the original but that's okay because everything we're doing will all work well together and at 399 I like that price so now we're gonna make our barn door by mitering some paint sticks so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set our miter saw at a 45 degree angle and the way you're gonna do that is loosening up this handle here that usually has some kind of of like little lever button that you pull down and then you move until this arrow lines up with the 45 degrees and then you can kind of hear it click into place and then you know it's good and then we're going to tighten that into place and so we know that it's secure so now that's going to cut a 45 degree angle which is what we want for our square sign since this paint stick has a certain length we don't have a lot of wiggle room on this so we're going to just take the very tip top part of that first let's make some cuts all right. Now we could swing this back around and go back and forth, but all we need to do really is flip it over. So we cut it this way. We're gonna flip it over and cut it on the other side. So this should fit right up in our corner and we didn't take a whole lot off for it, so that should fit there. And then we can make our marks down here. And then you can see this fits right in there. So now we're gonna do the crossbar. So we'll start by just cutting off the tips of that in a 45. So that fits in here good. And then we can just mark the straight cut that we need to make first. Line that up, make that mark. So we need to swing this back around to zero. And you can hear it click. There we go. Hopefully this fits right down in there, which it does. Kind of get off some of the loose fibers here. Mark our 45s here. All right, we'll cut this. Now, once you have your pieces cut, I'm going to just glue these into place with E6000 and hot glue same glues I love them I love the combination because you get the instant stick and then you get the strong hole and once that's dry we are gonna paint out the entire barn door in this red chalk paint by Waverly it's called lacquer and we're gonna just paint out the entire thing in that color 
Looking back, I wish I spray painted this with a primer prior to painting it as it took three coats of red lacquer chalk paint and even then it didn't fully cover the letter, but I knew that it would be no problem as we still needed to add our star, which it's now time to tape that pattern off. We are going to start by making a point a few inches lined up with center. Then I cut my tape and start a point and follow the angle of the X. Then to make the sides, I created a template to make these all even and the same all the way around. And then I tape off the sides as you see me doing here, leaving the edges unfinished at this point. Then I repeat this process all the way around. Once you are done, take a straight edge and cut them off square. Now we need to seal our edges with the original red color to prevent bleeding. Once that's dry, we're going to do three coats of ivory chalk paint. Once that's dry, peel back the tape and that's it. Well, ours is a little bit smaller at around $6 versus $200, you can't beat the savings. And even though our star is a little bit skinnier, I love how this turned out. I just think this is awesome. Alright, so for our last Christmas Pottery Barn knockoff, we are going to be doing the Mary sign. Now this Mary sign is $80 on their website and we are going to be taking again some liberties in the sizing of it because I think these sizes will not only work with our budget but it will also create a nice vignette with the other things that we've made on today's episode. We are going to take this frame that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I liked this and it looked really similar to the thin black frame that was on our Pottery Barn inspiration. We are going to use our one dollar frame and a sheet of chipboard that I got at Michael's for around 50 cents. Start by taking everything out of the frame then we're going to take our cardboard piece from the frame and use it as a template to trace out the size that we need for the chipboard. Then we're going to cut that out and then we're going to take that same red lacquer chalk paint and do a couple of coats with that. Once that's dry, I have provided a free printable in the description box below, or you can make your own. I just typed out the word Mary in the font Halliman and set it at a 137 point font. Then you can take a piece of graphite paper and trace this onto your chipboard and then hand paint it out in ivory chalk paint. Because I don't have that steady of a hand, I'm just gonna use a stencil that I've created on my Cricut machine using this image. I do two coats of ivory chalk paint and then I peel back the stencil to reveal our image. To give it the sturdiness of a solid wood board, we are going to just place in our chipboard and then put the glass behind the chipboard and it will make it much sturdier and then put everything back into the frame. Now I cannot believe how cute this $2 piece of art is. 
I will take this piece of art any day of the week and keep $78 in my pocket. Thank you very much. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. Don't forget to check out the Look For Less playlist as well as Yami and Lisa's episodes. All of the links are in my description box below. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to see you around next week. And until next time to all of my DIY Niners, bye.